Serrat Society and Art in Paris, France in the 1800s. Join me on a trip back in time to the late 19th century. Paris, a growing city that was filled with opportunity, power, and wealth. The late 19th century in Paris was the foundation of the status of those who lived within. Some prospered, but unfortunately, not all of society had the same faith. Here is an example of the working class. They are strained and overworked for little to no wage. During the late 1800s, Napoleon III's ruling came to an end. This began the Paris Commune in 1871, which was a radical socialist and revolutionary government coming into power. Communists asked for separation of the church and state to divide and balance power. The Paris Commune ended after only two weeks and drove Paris into madness, with riots throughout the streets and a time later came the radicals. Radicals separated based on class, religion and power. The late 1800s were chaotic for the French society and set the time period for which a French artist known as Georges Seurat would be inspired with. Georges Seurat was a French painter living in Paris during the 1800s. Born and raised into a wealthy family enabled him to pursue his art career. He was one of the generators of the Neo-Impressionism movement. He painted mostly about nature, calm settings, and or modern urban art. He is oftentimes remembered by his painting technique known as pointillism, which is the use of small strokes that can be described as thoughts from close-up. This is the only portrait of Georges Seurat known to exist. Seurat submitted many paintings into salons which were rejected because they were different, as a result of being criticized for his art not fitting into the Impressionism category, and having his artworks rejected, he took matters into his own hands and began the Neo-Impressionism movement. In his first two masterpieces during his transition from Impressionism, called Bathers at Asseneers and A Sunday on La Grande Jot, we can see his techniques put to work. During his education, he studied artists and their paintings. He observed the colors that they incorporated within, and he spent one year experimenting with colors and monochromatic pieces. He then developed his own chromatic circle that showed the law of contrast and supplemental colors. He was known as the artist who mixed art with science. As mentioned before, Seurat mastered his technique, known as pointillism, in which he created diverse tiny strokes that resemble dots. If you look closely at my chosen painting, A Sunday on La Grande Jot, located at the Art Institute of Chicago, you can see small points throughout the painting. According to Seurat, he implemented this technique because he wanted the viewer's brain to fill in the gaps between his dots. He wanted each individual to look at his art in their own visual way with the colors that the brain chose to see. Again. This is an example of when Seurat mixes art with science. Georges Seurat was part of the Neo-Impressionism movement. The artists of the Neo-Impressionism movement had one goal and that goal was to reach harmony to the viewer and to perfect their lines and composition. Throughout Seurat's painting, we can see how he includes plenty curvatures of his lines. For example, he manipulates his lines to seem further or closer. Many do not understand what the paintings of this movement were trying to do, but they weren't trying to get any emotion out of the viewer. It was purely aesthetic and pleasing art. This painting, Bathers at Asneers, located at the National Gallery in London, is the first of Surratt's major paintings. It was created at such a great scale that it takes up an entire wall for itself. It portrays the working class on a hot day, looking almost relieved and at peace, laying on green grass, a sighted transparent blue river. Leisure time for the working class was not common. It's almost introducing the working class as ordinary people who want to do ordinary things just as middle and upper class people do. Although this artwork depicts the working class, in the background we get a glimpse of a woman in an expanded blue dress in a boat, no other than the upper class. The men in this painting are sitting or laying down, some without shirts and wearing shorts, which supports the warm weather theory. A younger boy in a little red hat is in the water shouting at the other side, the other side, where the upper class and a Sunday on La Grande Jate has taken place. We can also see a slouched, tired looking man who hangs his feet into the river in which are two men cooling down and relaxing in the water. An interesting note to make about this piece is that women are not shown as primary characters. Why is that? 
because women were not allowed to work. They were stay-at-home wives. It was a late 19th century normality. Each character in this image seems to be in a thoughtful state of mind, enjoying their time of peace at the end of a workday. This painting, my chosen artwork, a Sunday on the Grande Jatte, is the second major art piece that Seurat created. Compared to Bathers at Essenier's, it is showing the middle class and the upper class. Some say Bathers at Essenier's was the preparatory work for this piece, where he practiced techniques and gathered his ideas. Similarly, we can see repeated colors being used, blues, reds, and greens. This was all a part of his idea to incorporate the science of the brain into his art pieces. There are couples and families gathered near the same river from the previous piece, enjoying the sunny day to protect them from the sun, some carry umbrellas and wear sun hats. The women are wearing dresses that are plump from below the waist, as if the bigger, the better. There is a couple who stands as others sit in the grass, accompanied by their small dogs and a monkey on leashes. Upon research, I found that most of these women are workers. The only jobs that women had at this time were being maids and or prostitution. The monkey with the woman signifies that she is a prostitute, and the woman fishing near the river as well. Hiding her face is a symbolization of awaiting customers. Women would come here to look for work as men would come here to look for women. In contrast, Seurat places a mother with her young daughter dressed in all white, which portrays purity, as opposed to the women that surround them. The younger girls in the back, who sit with their families, are run around the park, in which she seems to make a connection with their childhood and their future. Again, like in Bathers at Asneers, in the distance we can see boats, with more wealthy people on them enjoying a summer activity. Using a Marxist critical approach, it was found that during the late 19th century in Paris, society was undergoing plenty industrial changes. The city became modernized and witnessed technological, industrial, and social changes. The ultimate goal was wealth and power. It was common to see Parisians dress their best and showcasing their luxuries, especially on Sundays after church, which is the setting of Georges Seurat's painting along the River of Seine, which today looks nothing like it did back in his painting. Most regions of Paris, France were controlled by either church, government, or the wealthy people who had gained power. At a certain point, the government wanted to take over more land and gain more power, which meant that many ordinary families had to struggle to stay on their feet and keep their class title. Migration of workers approached as there was a booming growth in the working industry, which many did not like. Using gender studies as my analytics strategy, I found that not only were families faced with the chaos of the society, but also with what went on at home. Feminine and masculine normalities played a big role in the average home and marriage during the 19th century. A man was to be the worker and the one that provided for his family, always tidied up in a suit and half of the support of his wife. Marriage was seen as a must during this time and age. It was the backbone of a man. And at the time, no man meant nobody was there to provide for the wife and kids. Many women faced the difficulties of having to find work, which was very limited, which was why prostitution was so common during the 19th century Parisian society. Unfortunately, plenty of women were looked at in disgust by the men who were looking for pure women, similarly to Eros Black before, which meant that women who turned to prostitution had their fate chosen. Many women were forced to endure tough labor jobs as farmers and out in the fields as a result of lack of jobs for women. Eventually, Paris was rebuilt, with parks, attractions, new railroads, and bridges for better transportation, which provided industrial workers with more jobs and opportunities. Paris became a capital of opportunities and attracted thousands of tourists, much like it still does to this day. Unfortunately, Seurat passed away on March 29, 1891 in Paris, France, due to tuberculosis and was unable to continue his art. Seurat incorporated some major elements into his work. He included linear perspective, repetition, positive space, emphasis, and organic lines. His painting included about more than an estimate of 30 people, which were all scattered throughout the park, involving in different activities. We have couples, groups of families, and even individuals focusing on the view of the river. We also see groups on the people of river boats canoeing and engaging in other activities. There is no section in the painting where nothing is added. Aside from people, he includes pets, nature such as trees, water, and grass. We can see that there is an emphasis in the couple to the right of the painting, since they are much bigger and seem closer in distance than the man taking the photograph toward the center of the painting. 
The park and the river look further away. The tree branches get smaller, the people walking on the grass become smaller. Along the river we can hardly make out whether there is people paddling on the boat. It makes you squint your eyes and wonder what is beyond what's right in front of us. Sirwa wanted the viewer to feel like they were present at the river of Sin on that Sunday morning. During this time, women were very aware of fashion. From their white dresses and sun hats to their umbrellas. Umbrellas were used to make a fashion statement, but also to protect their faces from the heat and sun on a warm day. These women were held to high expectations from society, where having pale skin meant wealthy and signified non-working. We can see in Surat's painting that he incorporated a repetition of these umbrellas on the woman. Perhaps he did this to exaggerate the fact that women had plenty of leisure time to focus on clothing and accessories. Organic lines were also incorporated throughout the painting. Organic lines are those that are found in nature. We can see that the most obvious lines are the lines and curvatures that he creates in the branches and leaves of the tree. The woman's umbrellas and clothing have volume, as well as the shadows that are casted from the people in the painting. If we were to imagine the park without the people, it would be a landscape, which would consist of all of nature, where we would most definitely find organic lines. I chose to draw this piece because I wanted to show an underlying meaning. I drew a 19th century Persian couple who was facing the viewer like they knew that they were being photographed. They are in front of the shore with boats, and if you look closely, the woman is well dressed in bright colors but does not look very happy. In contrast, I drew the man with a cocky grin and money signs over his head. The moral of my art piece goes to show that even though you have money and are in paradise, it doesn't always mean happiness. In addition, inspired by Seurat's pointillism technique, I incorporated pointillism in my own way. Although I did not use it to completely create and color my content like Seurat did, I added them throughout the outlines and color within my drawing. What was the goal of the artist during the Neo Impressionism movement? To achieve harmony to the viewer, incorporate science, and to perfect lines and composition. Why was pointillism a technique that played with the viewer's imagination, according to Seurat? Pointillism allows the brain to choose which colors to see within the gaps of each dot. How did a Sunday on La Grande Ja and Brothers at Asneers relate? If you said something about Brothers at Asneers, the first artwork presented being the preparatory work for a Sunday on La Grande Ja, then you are correct. Or that it was relating the working class and the middle and upper class, then you are correct as well.